today as we continue our um, contemplation for Holy Week, Holy Week of Crisis Contemplation. Today we are talking about a lamentation for the world from uh, the text of Luke chapter 21. some teachings and he was questioned by the leaders of the day um, who questioned his authority. From For the rest of the week he spent time in the temple teaching and he spent time in the evenings at the Mount of Olives. Um, and in one of those teaching sessions he gave a prophetic vision of the future. And that's what our text is today. From Luke chapter 21. He speaks of a lamentation for the world. It's perfect to um, sit beneath the rag tree um, where many of your prayers and thoughts and wishes are fluttering in the wind. And today the wind is is participating, cooperating. Um, so your prayers and thoughts that you've requested over time have been placed in this tree along with a um, Tibetan prayer flag and the bells which ring each time the wind is strong enough. So it's perfect, I think, that a lamentation, uh, a, a reading about a lamentation would take place under the rag tree. This um, practice, a rag tree, comes from uh, Celtic spirituality, where all through Ireland and Scotland you can see holy wells like we have here, just, just off to the side, and the rag tree where people put their wishes and their desires, their prayers. Um, so that's our setting today. And one side we have the well, the other side behind me is the labyrinth which I just walked and have been walking daily. So let's take a look at what Barbara Holmes has to say in her crisis contemplation, Healing the Wounded Village. We've been using her book, readings from her book as our text today. And so today she writes, today's reading she writes, communal lament is important for several reasons. It wakes us up and in doing so makes us mindful of the pain of our neighbors who no longer can go about business as usual when the women begin to wail. Their keening rattles both marrow and bone. The collective wail reminds us that we are not alone. The sheer power and resonance of a grief-stricken chorus reminds us that we are beings of quantum potential. We still have agency in every cell of our being, enough to survive even this. Lament allows the pain to escape and stitches us to our neighbors. We are called to weep with those who weep and mourn with those who mourn. Our tears, our prayers, when we can't speak of that when we can't speak, a baptism of sorts, a salty healing, a sign of our vulnerability. Lament is a collective response to tyranny and injustice. When we are confronted, when we are confronted with the horror of our violence-laden society, our mindless killing of innocents, we shift from individual sobs and solitary whine to collective moans. We don't know what will emerge from this time of tearing. 
but we do know that something is being born, like a woman in labor. There is expectation in the darkness, anticipation amidst the suffering, hope permeating the pain. Something new is being born and something old is being transformed. This source is available for you online on the page, on the Facebook page, and um, it gives a little more detail about keening, which was a practice uh, 18th, up until 18th, 19th century, um, and even still today in some cultic cultures where uh, sometimes professional keeners, um, usually women, will come and mourn, especially at a death for the family and for that dear departed one. Um, it's moaning and wailing and crying and calling our bodies to recognize the loss that's been experienced. So in Luke chapter 21, Jesus goes on to, to tell us a vision of the future that could be ripped from the headlines today. He says, nation will go to war against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes and there will be famines and plague in many lands. And there will be terrifying things and great miraculous signs from heaven. That's not meant to scare us. It's meant to prepare us for a world that is other than what we expect. And Barbara Holmes explains crisis is often being coming out of things that we don't expect, coming out of things that aren't part of our anticipation of a perfect world. Um, we experience injustice, violence, hatred, and crimes, and, and those things. And one great example, I think, of worldwide lamentation was in um, 2020, right after the murder, the lynching of George Floyd when people all around the world defied the limits of lockdown for a pandemic, went out into the streets and demanded justice. Everywhere, it was, um, I believe I read somewhere, it was the largest worldwide um, display of protest against injustice. A lamentation, a wailing, a crying out of humanity for human kindness and for justice. And I believe it was effective. I think it had a large effect on some of the litigation that um, we see as a result even today, some of the things that have, have been born because of hearing the world cry out in um, lamentation and peaceful protest. So your voice does matter. It really does, even though sometimes it feels like it doesn't. Well, um, there's a song that they used to sing when I was a little girl that um, in church, and there, there are actually two. I'm gonna sing two songs for you today. And both of them remind me of a lament from different perspectives. One is very mournful, very sorrowful, um, just weary and the other can be taken either way the the release or the good feeling after having suffered a loss and realizing what God has done for us so um, I'm going to do two songs for you today and the first is just another day With a mind stayed on Jesus, just another day 
that the Lord has kept me. Can you hear the mourning and the wailing in that? Um, there's another verse I'm going to sing. And, and I want you to feel that. If you're in a space where you can, go ahead and moan out with me. Let that moan come from your toes up to the back of your throat out into the universe, that wailing, that moaning, that lamentation. I've been tried, but the Lord has kept me. I've been tried, but the Lord has kept me. He has kept me from all evil with a mind stayed on Jesus. Just another day that the Lord has kept me. that blessed you. you can imagine being a little girl and hearing people that you really trusted and knew and understood as leaders and mothers and fathers in your church singing that song at the end of a long day and just what that does for you inside from a child to hear people able to sing that and state that at the end of the day. <clears throat> this song also was one that they sang when I was a little girl. <clears throat> I don't know where all of these songs came from. Some of them my cousin Sarah Nettles wrote. Um, I don't know which one she wrote or didn't. Like I said, I was a pretty little kid. And even into adulthood, I, I still didn't know. They were just part, it was like breathing. It was just part of who you are. So this song is called, Oh, What He's Done For Me. And I'm going to play a little tambourine while I sing it. <clears throat> a little bit of water here. Lamenting makes you thirsty. <laughs> Especially on a hot day. Oh, 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 what he's done for me. Oh, 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 oh what he's done for me. Oh, 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 what he's done for me. Well, I never shall forget what he's done for me. Oh, 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 oh what he's done for me. two more days that we will record. Tomorrow's going to be extra special. Tomorrow is Monday, Thursday, and we are doing what Jesus asked us to do in remembrance, and that's going to be breaking bread and feet washing. 
So I invite you to come out around noon tomorrow to the farm, Ashura Monastery, and we're going to walk the well rather than the labyrinth tomorrow. We'll walk the well and we will break bread and wash feet. So I hope you can join us. Um, if you can't in person, join us virtually. And I hope that these continue to be a blessing for you during this holy week. Blessings, everyone.